Okay, so today we're talking about a thing, something called mutual exclusive and independent events. In the next video will do tree diagrams. Okay, so two events are called mutual exclusive or disjoint is another word for that events if they cannot occur at the same time. So an example could be, imagine that I am playing football or soccer if you're from North America. And I know in a game, I by one game, I could score one goal, one goal, or zero goals. Now, it is impossible to score zero goals and one goal in the same game. That is impossible. So they are mutually exclusive, scoring zero goals or one goals in the same game. Mutually exclusive cannot happen. So we often look at this as this is possibility of scoring zero goals, and this is the possibility of scoring one goal, and there's no overlap. They cannot happen at the same time. So if two events are mutually exclusive, then A equals B, or another way we say is A or B is true. Let's see an example of how this works. You select one card from a standard deck. What are the odds of choosing an ace or a king? Well, why is this a mutually exclusive event? Well, if I consider this diagram here, this is all the possible aces and this is all the possible kings. So it's impossible for me to draw with one card, an ace and a king at the same time. It's one or the other, not both. So that's why it is an exclusive event. Oh. Now, if I consider, if I select one card from the cards, what are the odds of choosing a king or a heart? Well, consider this scenario here. Here are all the hearts that are possible. Here are all the kings that are possible. This region here in the middle, this is an overlap, and a king of hearts is in both. So these are not mutually exclusive events because this event of king and heart can happen at the same time. Next thing we're going to talk about is compound events. This is events that consist of two or more random events that occur at the same time. So consider a random event like um, tossing a coin and let's say drawing a card, drawing a card, drawing a card. These are compound events. It could also be, if it's random, it could be uh, voting an election followed by the event could be whether if there's whether or not you take the bus home or take the car home. That's another possible scenario. <coughs> and then it could be voting with transportation. So any two events that happen at the same time or after each other and you put them together as a compound event. Here's an example. So a compound event has this specific sample space. So here's my coin toss. Here's my die, one, two, three, four, five, six. What is the compound event? Well, it's the flipping the coin, the flip of the coin, flip of coin, and the die roll. So when I toss the coin, the probability of getting a head, so if I, the probability of a head is equal to one half, because it's either a head or a tail. The probability of rolling a six is, well, that happens one out of six. Now, what's the probability of getting a six and a head when I toss the coin and roll the die? Well, of all these 12 scenarios here, the only one that is both is this one here. This is a head. These are all my heads. And this is the six. So it can happen. The probability of getting a head 
and a 6 at the same time is equal to 1 12th. That's the symbol for and. Now, if I consider the next question, how does how do these two probabilities relate to this one? Well, if I look carefully, I know that if I go 1 half times 1 6, which are the probabilities from probably of a head, probably of 6, if I multiply those, I get 1 12th, which is indeed the same as the probability of a head and 6. This is not a coincidence. When these events are what we call independent, independent, we can multiply these events together that are in a compound event. Independent means getting a 6 is, does not affect the flip of the coin. They are independent, not affected, and therefore I multiply. So two events are independent means one does not depend on the outcome of the other. It's not affected. So two events are independent means that it's the probability of A and the probability of B, which means I can go the probability of A times the probability of B. I can multiply them. Example, in darts, John has a 40% chance of getting a bullseye, while Pete only has a 30% chance of getting a bullseye. Find the probability that both of them make a bullseye. Well, that's going to be the probability that John gets the bullseye and that Pete gets the bullseye. I can then multiply 0 0.4, 40%, times 0 0.3, 30%, and get 0.12. So the probability that they both get a bullseye is 12%. I multiply them because they are independent. And finally, suppose I have a bag of white balls and black balls, 6 and 9 in, respectively. I'm going to choose one and put it back. Choose a second. I want to find the probability of two white balls. Well, the probability of a white ball is 6 out of the total. 6 plus 9 is 15. That's the total number of white balls. So the probability of getting a white ball and a second white ball is going to be 6 over 15 times 6 over 15. Probably of a white ball times a probably of a white ball. If I multiply that, I end up with a value of 0 0.16. When I think about independent and mutually exclusive, mutually exclusive or disjoint, when I do this, I typically think about adding. Adding. And now this is not an absolute rule, but it's often I go probability of A plus the probability of B. Often, not always, often. But I think about adding probabilities together. So this one you have to be careful of. It's not always true. But when I have this one here and the intersection, I think about the operation multiplying. All right, so or often means adding and often means multiply. They're not absolute rules, but they're often really good rules to think about. And there we have the idea of mutually exclusive and independent events.